everybody. Welcome to our uh, first afternoon edition here for Stucco Live. Uh, my name is Mark Fowler. I'm the executive director for the Stucco Manufacturers Association. What I want to do, I want to introduce Herman Guevara with uh, Plastic Components because what we're going to show is uh, kind of a plastic component system, if you will. Hi, my name is Herman Guevara. I'm the director of sales of Plastic Components. We're based out of Miami. Uh, we're going to show you installation of a few products that we, that we sell. As you can see, we've got a live mock-up. Usually the very first thing we put on is a weep screen. This is a framed wall. And if you have the weep screen down here, the water is going to flow down. It goes down. It's got these little holes down here in the bottom and the water will weep out. This we call the mid wall. And basically what this, this came about after the 2004 hurricane season. When they did the analysis, they saw a lot of failures where the concrete on a two story home met the framing. This was developed to mitigate that problem. This particular one can work on frame wall. You can have the framing underneath, which is what we would like to see, by the way, is the building paper come up, go above, beyond it, and it's lapped over. So even if water were to leak, it still is gonna go through in there. They did put a section piece in there. We wanted to show that because that's where we didn't have any day, but that's where you would actually wanna put some sealant back there to seal that back up. But the thing that I wanna talk that makes this really unique is, and it's especially popular in uh, Florida, is where you have CMU block wall up to the first floor or even a sub parking garage. If you had like a concrete wall here, you, you gotta have a weep screen because that's what, remember the weep screen has to be at the foundation plate line. It doesn't matter if it's 10 feet in the air or right at the ground. It's still wherever that plate line is, that's where you've gotta have it. So this could be this side, this half, you can get it in half inch, 5 eighths inch or 7 eighths inch. So in case you're wondering where to set this at, at the floor line, there is, you can't see it here, but there's an actual little line right in here. That's for the plate line. So if you set that at the bottom of the plate line, you're going to be code compliant. So this particular trim joint, not only does it give you the plaster grounds, but it also allows for movement. Um, let's go ahead and uh, put on this drainage mat next. Due to some issues uh, that have happened in some areas, and remember we're talking about Florida particularly, uh, and Florida, Florida is a good example, they're gonna require a rain screen behind stucco now. And there's different ways to do rain screen. You can do it with furring and strapping. You can do that if you want. Uh, that's expensive and time consuming and a pain in the neck. The better way to do it is we think is using these drain mats. This one here is by Plastic Components. It's called Ultra Drain Mat. The thing that makes this different than other ones is you see it's got like a fleece lining on the side. So these liners on the outside keep the cement from filling in like this. Uh, these are 100% code compliant. The whole United States doesn't require a rain screen. I would say from Texas going east, you're gonna have to do a rain screen and then pretty much along the California coast. Uh, that's only for framed walls. You can still plaster directly over CMU block or concrete. The next product is our um, Ultralath Plus. Um, this is a unique and new product. There's a special way to put it on. Uh, we want to make sure the furring, because it does see, if you can feel on one side, it's got these lines on it. That, that's the furring to hold it uh, away from the wall just a little bit. So you make sure you get cement in there. The nice thing about this product is there's a lot of nice things. One, it's not gonna, it's not gonna rust can't rust, it's plastic. Um, it's definitely ASTM compliant. Another nice thing is you attach it just like you do current lath. So the guys in the field don't have to learn how to do anything different, except for instead of cutting it with snippers, you can actually cut it with a utility knife. And the attachment is six inches on center along the stud. And in this particular case, we've got steel framing, so he's using self-tapping uh, wafer head screws. The wafer head screw, just so you know, it's not just your standard screw, it has a little bit of a, a larger head to it. And that's so it engages the lath on three strands. Don't have to worry about doing extra furring to it because the furring is already built in. This can go on, of course, you gotta keep the furring and that's just what they're looking at to make sure the furring is going against the wall. And you want at least a one inch overlap. And that's, it looks like they got about two inches there, so we're in good shape and I think it's half inch on the side, minimum half and one inch, just like expanded metal lap, it's no different than that. On the drainage mat underneath, I forgot to mention, that comes in two sizes, six millimeter width and a 10 millimeter width. The six millimeter, I, I'm gonna tell you the SMA, 
kind of prefers that a little bit. We think that it doesn't it doesn't throw all your trims out of whack and way. It's it's thin. And you can also use this uh, product or the, if you were putting on foam and you had to have a, a, a drainage behind that, you could use the lath or the uh, drain mat. And you don't need the fleece lining on the drain mat for behind foam because you're going to be plastering over the foam. There's a market in the Carolinas where they actually use the lath in strips behind cement board system because it's got a very high compressive value. So it's not going to crush on you. So they'll use it in strips to create a drainage plane behind a cement board system. So yeah, there's some interesting applications. One question I get asked, and I gotta say I get asked a lot, is they said, well, what happens if they screw this down and they crush that mat behind it? It is possible that he could screw this down and kind of put a crimp into that drain mat. But you know something? Water's not gonna come down here and go, oh, well, guess we can't go anywhere, we're done, we're just gonna, no, it just goes right around it. Water is insidious. It never takes a day off or any time off. Uh, that's why it's really important to make sure we get these flashings right. And if you look at the mock-ups we have around here, that's exactly what we try, and I'll, I'll just say about the this, um, SMA training program, we try to teach your guys out in the field that are out doing this to pay attention to the laps to make sure that you're lapping things like, sh it's like shingles on a roof. I mean, you don't put them on upside down. That's gonna be your problem. If you, if you shingle it and you layer it out and allow it to get out somewhere, you're gonna be in good shape. If you wanted to run this vertical, they have a, a code compliant report that says, yes, you can run it vertical. So uh, we're gonna put a scratch coat on, the first coat that goes on, and this is part of a, this is actually the, the grounds for a three coat system. Go ahead and start putting the mud on. Pablo is gonna be, uh, he's gonna show us, this is a, a hawk and trowel. There's the hawk. Uh, that's your, that's basically a handheld table for he's gonna put the mud on, he's got his trowel. It's a little bit of a skill, kind of like playing golf. You gotta kind of get a little hang of it. Um, it takes, I always said it takes about six months of steady work to get good at it. Nice. Now, nice thing what Pablo's doing is he's taking the mud from the front of the hawk. There you go, that, that's something kind of interesting from, because if you watch, Pablo, can you turn sideways and show me how to take it from the front of the hawk, the mud. Did you see how he takes the mud from the hawk at the front of the hawk? And you think, okay, show take it from the back. Yeah, show the back. That's when you start. If you were to start being a plasterer, that's how you're gonna start from the back. And you wanna know why? Because when you go to turn it back on yourself, what would happen, Pablo? It goes all right down on yourself. The reason to take it from the front of the hawk is, uh, one, it's ergonomically better on your body. You're not having to lift it over the mud that's there. You're just going right to the wall. So it's, it's actually better on your shoulders and back. The other thing is, it's actually faster. By the way, Pablo, how's, it, how's the going over the laugh feel, good? Beautiful. Feels perfect. He loves it. He says it's great. So what he's doing is he's pushing it in there. It's, it's not a tremendous amount of pressure, but it is important to get it in there with sufficient pressure to make sure it's well embedded and keyed into the lath. Problems I've seen, not with this lath, but just with expanded metal lath moreover, is that sometimes they just lay the mud on top of the wall. We want to make sure it's pushed in there. What he'll do now, he's using a hand scratcher and I'll go ahead and let him finish that row and then turn around and show you that tool. Can you turn and show it? It's basically the trowel with notched edges on it. You can also use a scarifier or what we call a comb that does the same thing. He's now ensuring that the mud is pushed into the lath. By going across, he'll push it in. Uh, and, and then he'll come along and it leaves those serrated edges along there. There's a couple of purposes with those serrated edges. One of the purposes is to make a key for the next coat because this is only half of your base coat. You're going to put on another, this is a nominal 3 8 inch thickness. So to put on another 3 8 inch thickness, you want to make sure it has something to bond to. The other reason we like to have horizontal lines, and I'm going to tell you the ASTM says predominantly horizontal, doesn't mean every line has to be horizontal. Nobody's got to get crazy about it. But the reason is, is that you want to, if you want to damp pure this wall, you can, when you hit it with water, it helps slow down the water process and helps the water. Instead of always just running right down like a vertical, it actually helps slow the water and helps the cement cure a little bit better. What he's doing now is using a sponge float and this sponge float, or you could use a brush, it's either one, 
but uh, he's wiping it down the edges. It's real important to get all the clean edges uh, cleaned off because when you come back and brown coat, that cement is unforgiving. It'll be hard as a rock and it doesn't care. And when you put your rod or Darby on it, it just wants to chatter along the edge so it's nice and clean. Another nice thing about uh, PVC trims like this is that you don't have to worry about scraping the galvanization off. Right. You don't have to worry about that. Sometimes if it were to get, if it were to get hard on there and you had to clean it off, it kind of, you can, you can clean it off easier without having to damage it. Now this would be the scratch coat and this is a good scratch coat. What you want to do is make sure you cover the lath. We say sufficiently cover the lath. This is, this is a good scratch coat. That is pretty much the advantage of PVC trims. We like this floor line piece uh, and we actually have details of it uh, at the SMA that we can share with anybody like that. Um, these are great trims. Plastic component makes some really great products. Thank you guys. Yeah.